Hello, my name's Mac, and I want to talk to you about buildings, because buildings can tell us stories. I work in a wonderful place called Holcomb Hall on the North Norfolk coast. It was built by Thomas Cook, the first Earl of Leicester, in the early 18th century. In fact, between 1734 and 1764. That's right, it took 30 years to build. Holcomb Hall is part of a country estate in a huge parkland, but it in fact has many things in common with other buildings and I want to explore some of those features with you today. So every building has a side that it wants to show to the world and this is our magnificent south front and every building has a side that it tries to hide like the bins. <laughs> so our building is made of bricks and all these bricks are handmade and they're made in beautiful moulds like these and in the hall there are nearly three million bricks and this is our roof ours is made of slate <laughs> Holcomb Hall also has cellars and this is our huge wood cellar as you can see it has vaulted brick ceilings to hold the huge weight of the hall of course every building needs windows these are known as Venetian windows or Palladian windows. We'll come back to Palladio shortly. And of course we've got doors and these doors are all in a line. It's known as an enfilade and it runs the whole length of the house. And there were hidden doors for the servants. And we have ceilings. This one in the marble hall is inspired by the Pantheon. Pantheon is an ancient Roman temple. So this is the marble hall ceiling from the other side and you can see here how it was made. You have rough hewn wood and then you have laths and then the plaster has got hold of big handfuls of plaster and slapped them against the laths and these are known as the snots as it oozes through. And of course we've got floors. This is oak floorboards and here is a modern carpet made to an 18th century design hand woven of course and this is a Savonnerie carpet made in Paris in the early 19th century it's one of the oldest carpets we have in the house of course Holcomb Hall has staircases this is the grand staircase in the marble hall that was used by the guests there were stairs, especially for the servants as well. This winding staircase goes right from the very bottom of the house to the very top. Some of our walls are painted, as you can see, but just look how many layers of paint we've had over the years. Some of the walls are covered in sumptuous fabrics. This is known as cafoy, and it's a mixture of cotton, silk and wool. And this has been here as long as the house. And some of our walls are covered in alabaster, which looks a lot like a marble. And they're decorated with beautiful patterns, like this Greek key, and above us, the Vitruvian wave. And in the bedrooms, we have beautiful tapestries. These tapestry panels are from Belgium, and they're considerably older than Holcomb Hall. And these tapestries are from London. You can see P. Saunders, Soho. The gold you can see on the windows and doors and ceilings is not paint, it is real gold. It's extremely thin gold known as gold leaf. It is applied to surfaces to make them gleam and sparkle, especially in the candlelight. All buildings are made for someone. They're known as the client. In the case of Holcomb Hall, it's Thomas Cook. And here is a bust of him, a beautiful one in marble. Thomas Cook's quite unusual because he was an amateur architect and he helped design the hall too and kept a very close eye on its building. So all buildings are designed by somebody. We call that person the architect. In our case, the person who designed Holcomb Hall was William Kent. William Kent is also responsible for designing our neighbours' houses, Houghton Hall and the interiors of Raynham Hall. And of course, you need a builder. In our case, the builder 
was Matthew Brettingham, uh, a man from Norfolk, but he employed an awful lot of craftsmen as well to help build the house. Buildings have what we call an architectural style. In our case, Holcombe Hall was built in the style of Andre Palladio, so we called it a Palladian building. Palladio lived in northern Italy in the 16th century. He lived between 1508 and 1580. He in turn was influenced by the ancient Romans. Behind me is the portico of Holcombe Hall. It's a bit like sticking the front of an ancient Roman temple onto a domestic building. Palladio tried to put all the working parts of his buildings into wings. Holcombe Hall has four wings. Behind me is the family wing. They're almost like separate buildings, but as you can see, they are connected to the main hall. One wing was for the guests. We call this stranger's wing, and I'm here in the parrot bedroom, and we still have guests sleeping here today. And we have a wing devoted to prayer. We call this the chapel wing. Every house needs a kitchen, of course, and the kitchen at Holcombe Hall is absolutely enormous. And the kitchen wing is where an awful lot of the servants used to live, and it now has staff flats where people live permanently. There had to be a wing for the family to live in. I'm here in family wing, and this is where our family still live today, the Earl and Countess of Leicester and their children, and of course their pets. But what of the main hall? What happened in there? Well, this is where Thomas Cook could show off all the great works of art that he had collected on his travels around Europe when he was a teenager. This was known as his Grand Tour. He collected very many works of art, including paintings. Here is a fantastic painting by Rubens. So this is a painting that Thomas Cook commissioned of himself while he was still on his grand tour. Here he was still a teenager. It's a painting by Trevor Sarney. And on his grand tour, Thomas Cook collected books. He collected a lot of books, as you can see. I'm standing here in what's known as the Long Library, and I think you can see why it's called that. And here we have even more books. This library is in the Holcomb Attics. Thomas Cook also collected statues on his grand tour. I'm standing here in his statue gallery. Behind me is one of his ancient Roman statues. This one is of Diana. Did I mention that he had lots of books? So who was going to see all this great art in the main hall? Well, the other thing that Holcomb Hall was really good for was entertaining and having large parties, banquets, and having friends come to stay. Of course, the other thing was that Thomas Cook was able to show off his great wealth and his great taste. Okay, so that's a quick look at our building, Holcomb Hall, and now it's over to you. Maybe you could have a look at a building near you. You could look at your school, maybe your library, or even an old building near you, like a church. You could even look at your own home. Maybe you could ask, who built this building? What's it used for? And maybe even, who paid for it? <laughs> I hope you enjoy your project. Now it's over to you.